A bamboo sword? What's up, guys? <laughs> Welcome back. Did you miss me? I don't know. Maybe you did. I missed you. Welcome back. We're doing it again. It's the Filmstruck Film Club. I know it's, you know, usually we do these things like once a week. But, you know, it was the end of summer and we took a month off. So what can you do? Either way, we're catching up now. What's going on? It's your, your host with the most, Carson Higgins. I'm with my friend Groot, as always. And uh, we watched a spectacular film. Uh, this month, but this week, let's just, let's, just, you know, we're back on track, we're back on schedule, and we watched an absolutely masterful piece of cinema this week. Uh, this is a film that I had been wanting to watch for quite some time, and it's, maybe you're like this, I'm like this, where there's a list that you got maybe in your mind or written down somewhere of movies that you're like, one of these days, I'm gonna get to that. This was one of those movies for me, where, where the moment I heard of it, I was like, that sounds up my alley but we'll get there when we get there and boy oh boy did we get there <laughs> uh yes this is a a piece of japanese cinema from 1962 it is a samurai film uh it is what a lot of people consider maybe the number one or number two greatest samurai movie ever which is kind of awesome <laughs> considering how uh how present samurai culture is in cinema there's this golden age of japanese cinema that has you know Kurosawa's Seven Samurai, you got Zatoichi, the Blind Swordsman, you got Yojimbo over here. There's samurai everywhere. But this guy, my man, I forgot his name so I had to look at it, uh, Masakai, I hope I'm saying that right, Kobayashi, who is, you know, one of the greatest directors in Japanese cinema. He made the three-part Human Condition, he made Kwe Don, he made this film, which I'm gonna say right now, baby, Hari Kari. Ah, fuck. I, I don't know if I'm saying that right. But anyway, this is the number three movie on the letterboxed 250 best narrative films ever. So, the top three greatest movies on Letterboxd, uh, which if you're not using Letterboxd, go download and play with that because it's such a fun way to use social media if you're a nerd like me. Um, but yeah, Kobayashi, man. Holy cow. I have not seen The Human Condition, any of the three films. I have not seen Kwe Don. I have not seen Samurai Rebellion. Uh, but I know now that I must because this movie right here, Harikari, is, is astounding. It's absolutely magnificent. Uh, it is written by Shinobu Hashimoto, who, if you're like me and, you're, and you pray at the altar of Rashomon, he wrote that too. He wrote this. He wrote Rashomon. He was a writer on Seven Samurai. The guy is prolific AF. Uh, but yeah, this this story, man, what a ride. What an absolutely wild ride. I'm going to try not to spoil it right at the beginning because maybe you haven't seen this movie. Maybe you've never heard of this movie. Maybe you don't even know what Harikari is. Well, let me tell you. Uh, it is, mind you, it's also known uh, more formally as uh, seppuku, which is the, the, the ritual suicide that a samurai uh, would, would perform uh, when, I guess, uh, it... Something to do with dishonor. Forgive me. I'm not like a scholar on these things. Uh, but seppuku is the name of the ritual itself. And harikari is, uh, is the actual mm, stabbing oneself and disemboweling themselves. Uh, it's a gruesome, horrible way to die. But, um, you know, samurais, man, they, they be tough. So this movie quite literally starts with a, a dirty, lonely ronin, which is like a wandering samurai without a master. Uh, he rolls up on this like this house of this clan, the Iyi clan, uh, and he says he would like to kill himself here, <laughs> if, if they don't mind. <laughs> if y'all don't mind, I'm gonna kill myself in your courtyard, so make, make some space. Uh, it's kind of a ridiculous thing. Like We, we don't really have anything like this in, in American culture, for sure. Um, this like honorable suicide. Uh, but we find out kind of quickly that uh, he's not the first samurai to roll up and ask this request, which, you know, you're sitting there watching the movie, you're like, wait, what? Somebody else did this? What, what's going on here? Uh, so now we're, we're fully, we just go, we dive head first. There's this movie, man, is like, it's gripping immediately. It just grabs you and <laughs> holds your throat uh, because uh, we slowly find out that this dude, 
that previously showed up to do this, a guy named Matome, he came and asked if he could commit Harikari here, and they were like, yeah, sure, go for it. Because, turns out, uh, there's like been a problem of samurai showing up at, at ho clan houses and, and making this request. And uh, they, they even mentioned it at one point that there, there was like this one samurai who did that, and the clan was like so moved by his honorable request that they offered him a job as, as a retainer, so like one of the soldiers for the house. Um, and other people, after catching wind of this, went and tried, because samurais are, like, not really needed right now, so they're kind of out of the job. Uh, so now more samurais are starting to show up to these clan houses and make this request, and most people are like, eh, I don't really want you to do that, so here's some money, and why don't you get the fuck out of here? And so now there's kind of this, like, little scheme going where it's like, is this person really trying to kill themselves and be an honorable samurai, or do they just want some money? So, of course, when Matome shows up, they call his bluff, or so they, they think he's bluffing. They call his bluff, and Homie is trying to leave. He's like, give me a day or two. And they're like, no, 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 you're going to do this today, son. And you're going to use your swords because we looked at them, and uh, they're made of bamboo. So you sold your swords because you're a dishonorable fuck, and we're going to make you kill yourself with your bamboo swords, and we're not going to cut your head off until we're satisfied with what you've done. It is so gnarly, this, this premise, this setup. And of course, the scene where we, we are forced to watch this suicide take place, he has a blunt instrument that he's trying to stab himself, and when he falls on it, oh my god, it's so gnarly. I can't stress that enough. It's a gruesome scene. <clears throat> but our main dude, right, uh, played by, oh man, just an absolute knockout, uh, Tetsuya Nakadai, who's like the other... Uh, Mifune, which is, Toshiro Mifune was like Kurosawa's main dude. This is Kobayashi's main dude. Mind you, he worked with, with Kurosawa as well. He's in like every good Japanese movie. I looked at, <laughs> he's even got a tiny part in, in Seven Samurai, but he's in like, he's in everything. He's in all three of the Human Condition films. He's all over the place, y'all. Anywho, uh, he, he, we find out that he did in fact know Matome. And we, like, hear the whole story of how that is the case. But it's just so fucking thrilling, man. When So we got this new guy here, and, and the, the clan leader is like, let me tell you a story. Tells them all about Matome and what happened to him and how we made him kill himself. So if you're really saying that you want to do this, we're, we're going to make you do it. And he's like, oh, no, no, I'm ready. I'm going to fucking kill myself today. Like, get me a good second to chop my head off, and we'll be good. And he names, of course three separate dudes who are all out sick that day and we're just like okay what's going on here there's almost like a count of monte cristo level of like revenge story happening here and it's so beautiful uh yeah i don't really want to give away like what happens but he he does let let it be known that not only did i know that guy but i'm here to tell all of you that you dishonored him and and i'm gonna fuck you up basically uh, and so the, the showdown at the end is just unmissably incredible and, and some of the finest cinema I've ever watched. Uh, I absolutely loved this movie. I abs absolutely loved this movie. It, it probably is my favorite samurai movie now and one of my favorite Japanese movies I've ever watched and one of the best movies I've ever watched. It won the Grand Jury Prize at the Cannes Film Festival. So, you know, people when it came out thought it was pretty tight. Um, yeah, man, I... I, I I can't recommend it enough. It, it, you know, if violence is something that bugs you, uh, there is, like I said, that really gruesome scene. Uh, but yeah, besides that, man, watch this movie. Watch it, because you're gonna have your mind blown. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to watch some more uh, Kobayashi movies, by God. I, I might watch Kuei Don in October, because I guess it's a horror thing. Um, yeah. There's a ton of like thematic things that I'm not going to get into here, but just know that it's a really smart film that uses the samurai culture and this story to, to make a pretty scathing uh, critique on, on the Japanese government in this early 60s post-war world. Um, so there's, there's, it's, it's deeper than just a cool revenge story. There's a lot of social commentary uh, and, and like I said, like just some pretty hot barbs to the... Uh, to the government. But enough of all of this. We're going to keep this thing back. We're back up and running, baby. So we're going to we're going to have another film for next week. Be sure you're following Filmstruck Film Club so that 
You can keep up with what picks we have. If you want to go backwards in time and see all the things that we've watched, look at this YouTube channel. You can see all the reviews that we've done in the past. You can also go on Letterboxd, check out the Filmstruck Film Club, because there is a list there of everything we've watched since the beginning of time. So, that's it. That's enough. Groot, he's got nothing to say other than I'm Groot. I've got nothing left to say. I love you guys. So glad to be back. Mmm.